tonight, the Georgetown Hoyas take center stage against the Rutgers Charlotte Knights next. We welcome you to Big East basketball from the rack in Piscataway, New Jersey. Second meeting of the season between the Georgetown Hoyas and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Good evening, everybody. Kenny Albert with Jim Spinarkle. Rutgers just 1-7 in Big East play, coming off a one-point loss Wednesday at the hands of St. John's. Jim, it was their second heartbreaking defeat in the last three games. The last three games, Kenny, have not been friendly for Rutgers, and one of the problems with them is they have not been able to get the last second shot to go down. You look at the middle game there, Villanova, well, that's the blowout. I think that's the easiest one to forget. The Syracuse and St. John's games, though, Quincy Doobie had the opportunity at each of those, at each of those games to try to put the ball in the basket at the end. Both times the shot went in and then came out. So very frustrating for him, but keep in mind, he's a scorer, he's a shooter. Watch for him to step it up again. Doobie the leading scorer for Rutgers this season, but a combined nine points over his last two games. Now on the other side, Georgetown has overachieved in their first season under new head coach John Thompson the third. Hoyas Jim have already won more games than they did all of last season. Freshman Jeff Green, a big reason why. A terrific rookie, and he really does so many different things for this Georgetown team. He starts by coming in low. We'll find his game early and attack the basket. He's very good down low and especially good on follow-ups going after the basketball a second time. When he's at the high post, he can also pass the ball, so he adds that to his game. Also the ability to put the ball on the floor, find some room, and shoot that mid-range jump shot. So a terrific find for John Thompson. Jeff Green already a four-time Big East Rookie of the Week. The Scarlet Knights looking to get back on track, and they hope Ricky Shields can lead them to victory tonight. The only senior in the Rutgers starting lineup. Welcome back to the rack. Second meeting between the Hoyas and the Scarlet Knights. Georgetown beat Rutgers by seven. Just under a month ago at the MCI Center. The starting lineups, Brandon Bowman leading Georgetown at just under 16 points per game. Joined up front by Jeff Green and Roy Hibbert. Jonathan Wallace, Mashante Cook in the backcourt. For Rutgers, Ollie Bailey with Byron Joins. The guards, Quincy Doobie, Marquise Webb, and Ricky Shields, who is two three-point field goals shy of breaking the Scarlet Knights' all-time record. He is one away from tying former Rutgers star Jeff Billett. And Jeff Billett had a terrific career as a three-point shooter, as a guard for this league, for Rutgers. Terrific career, though, for Jeff. Rutgers has lost their last four. They've dropped seven of eight in Big East play, seven and 11 overall. Georgetown, six and three in the Big East, 14 and six overall. Hoyas won the last meeting. Rutgers five and two against Georgetown here at the rack. And interesting bottom line, Jim, right. the home team has won the last seven meetings in this series. So hopefully from Rutgers' perspective, Kenny, a positive that they can rely on hopefully pull it out tonight because they really need a win they need a good strong win to get themselves back into a good frame of mind mentally as a team Scarlet Knights not as invincible here at home as they have been in recent years last year 16 and 2 at the rack this year only 5 and 5 and Ali Bailey showing the nice touch gives Rutgers a 2-0 lead it's just a touch of a fadeaway also but how about that little delivery by Doobie going behind the back to enter the ball early on in this game for the post. Doobie set a career high with nine assists against St. John's on Wednesday night. Georgetown coming off a 10-point win over Seton Hall on Wednesday. They held the Pirates to just 15 first-half points. Cook off the mark from three. Bailey with the rebound for Rutgers. And Bailey had to fight his way through Green just then. He and Green bouncing a little bit as they come down the floor. Good effort, though, by Bailey. Doobie finding joins. Pushing back out for Webb. Marquise Webb in the backcourt along with Quincy Doobie and Ricky Shields. Shields thought about shooting the three. Wallace came over with the pressure. Nice. Cross court. Here's Webb. Good cross court pass there by Shields. 
Seven on the shot clock. Webb lost one up, and it's rebounded by the five-looking freshman, Jeff Green. And Webb's struggling shooting the basketball this year at just about 36, 37 percent. And Georgetown continues to run a modified Princeton offense. John Thompson, the third, spending his years at Princeton developing that. Nice step across. Bailey with the block, and right there to lay it in is Brandon Bowman. Well, one of the things Bowman. that Georgetown is trying to do, they're trying to, early on in this basketball game, establish some work down in the red paint, down below the basket. They've looked down there two and three times already early in this basketball game. Just over two minutes gone by. We are tied at two. Quincy Doobie dishing off Ollie Bailey, and he's fouled by Roy Hibbert. So Bailey will head to the free throw line. A look at John Thompson, the third, 14 and 6 record in his first season at Georgetown. All of the coaches, Jim, wearing sneakers tonight. Well, it's the program coaches versus cancer, and across the board, in the basketball across the nation this year and today, helping that cause that coaches have really stepped up with the American Cancer Society, Kenny, over the years and have raised millions of dollars for that particular cause. So it's great to see all the coaches making that stand, putting it out there for display. And, you know, it's funny today, it turned out a couple of games and you initially thought there might have been some uh, blister problems throughout the United States with some of the coaches, but it's a great tradition they've set. They're raising a lot of money, so it's terrific to see them all participating. Not only the head coaches, Jim, but the assistant coaches right. as well. I noticed you didn't bring your sneakers tonight, though. You're not going to work out at all, huh? I took your lead. <laughs> Rutgers leading by one. There's Wallace. And he gets the roll. Good little recovery there by Wallace. A little turnover problem possibly coming his way at the top of the key there. He avoided that. A nice little drifting left side of the court jumper there. Scarlet Knights working around as we approach three minutes gone by. Here's Shields into the paint. Ricky Shields, he and Doobie combined only 28 points the last two games. In fact, Doobie was held scoreless two games ago by Villanova, only nine against St. John's, and Shields has had his problems offensively as well as of late. You know, an 8 of 27 in, in that game against St. John's collectively isn't going to get it done. They were having struggles from the outside. Or the turnover is going to go the other way. Rutgers head coach Gary Waters in his fourth season wearing sneakers as well. I mean, frustrating last three games for Gary Waters, especially over at the Garden, too. Kenny, with that game we did the other night. Quincy Doobie. The opportunities, two out of those three games to get shots to go down, and he's the guy they want shooting the basketball. Rutgers led just about the entire game on Wednesday, led by as many as 10. And the possession arrow favors Georgetown. Well, that was not a bad set defensively just then by Bowman. I mean, he was all over at 6'8". Look at him keeping the hands away, not biting on the ball fakes. Getting a hand down and again, and then getting on the floor and going after it. Good work defensively to start this game off, keeping Doobie and trying to keep him out of a rhythm. And here's Bowman on the other end. Green thought about shooting the three. Hibbert with his back to the basket for Wallace. A little high pass to the post. We saw that on the open. They put Green there occasionally. Shot clock under 10. Just basic cuts away from the basketball. Oh, throw that right in his teammate's face. Here's Doobie. Oh, watch out. See, that's a good move. Now, with that, with Green going after him like that, Kenny, with Doobie hanging on the rim, normally he would have gotten called for a technical foul, but there was a chance that he might have gotten hurt, so it's a good no call by the official. Our time out on the floor with Rutgers ahead by one. Basketball fans, get ready for the 2005 Big East Women's Basketball Championship presented by State Farm. March 5th through the 8th at the Hartford Civic Center in Hartford, Connecticut. See all 12 Big East Women's Basketball teams battle for the Big East Championship Tournament title. For tickets and more information, call 860-525-4500. That's 860-525-4500. Or log on.
Cooper Tire is proud to be the official tire of the Big East Conference. Cooper Tires, don't give up a thing. It's New Jersey with Steve Adubato. He's stories behind the headlines. How education, child care. Issues affecting you and your family. Medicine, your money. Newsmakers one-on-one. -on -one. Doctors, politicians, professionals. Caucus New Jersey, Sunday, 6.30 and 11.30 Eastern on CN8. Greg Murphy, now part of the CNA News Team. How about some good news? And if you are a college football sports fan... Sports with Greg Murphy on CNA News. About the NHL, sports fans are looking for another way to fill Week the night, void. Weeknight 7 and 10 on CNA, the Comcast Network. On Saturday, February 5th, the two best welterweights in the world collide. Unbelievable speed, unparalleled skill, undeniable attitude. Their first bout was an all-out brawl with both fighters hitting the canvas. Now with three world titles on the line, they'll do it again. Sphinx versus Judah 2, Saturday, February 5th, live on events in demand pay-per-view or as part of your regular subscription to Showtime. Take a front row seat for this event on Events in Demand. On FSN. Clutchy Doobie will shoot a pair of free throws for the Scarlet Knights. And fouled here, by Jeff Green moments ago. And here he's hoping that he gets an easy layup coming down the floor. But Jeff Green comes from behind, tries to time his jump, hits him and the ball at the same time. So it's the right ball, and you're allowed to hang on the rim, especially when there's a problem, the fear of getting hurt or possibly undercut. How many times did you hang on the rim? Uh, let me think. Did it ever happen? <laughs> I never had to worry about that problem, Ken. I was always the guy doing the undercutting. Never worried about getting hurt on your way down. Yeah, never. Well, Doobie has extended the Rutgers lead to three, and now some pressure in the backcourt. I mean, that's the beauty of my basketball game. I never lost, never lost a step either because I never had one. They're going to spread the floor, looking for the post, and now the sharp cuts. There's a backdoor cut, nothing there for Cook. Green, that's one go from three, he's got it. 6'8", shoots the ball very nicely, good, ro good rotation on the basketball, but once again, that's the Princeton style that John Thompson the third will run. They're patient, they use the sets, they look for good shots, but they will shoot the ball from the outside also. Shoot about 37% as a team. And that's Green's average as well. Doobie to the hoop, and it's battled for, and Wallace came away with it. And now Wallace on the other end with good Pullman. Look. Yeah, good look by Wallace just then. Really in no man's land underneath the basket, but that's the kind of shot down the other end, Ken, that Doobie would like to see go down. Struggling that last game out, 4 for 14 against St. John's the other night, so he's going to find the rhythm, see the ball go through the hoop again. Shot clock, now it's seven. Ashante Cook, perfect. Yeah, what's demoralizing a little bit is that you work that shot clock down and then make your shot at the seven-second mark. Rutgers gets a little frustrated because of that. Hoyas have spread out the scoring. Four different Hoyas have scored. Georgetown leading 9-7. Shields looking to gain a step on Cook, goes to the left hand and does not get the roll, rebounded by Green. It's a good matchup between Cook and Shields. Doobie has little problems on him because of Bowman down the other end. It's 6'8", it's giving him some problems with his size, trying to get shots off. Hibbert and Wallace play catch. Wallace, stepped out. Stepped on the end line as Joel Wiggin, who had hit a career game against Georgetown last month, he replaces Ricky Shields. Wiggin started that game for Doobie and scored a career-high 23 points. And one of the things you try to do as a coach, you say to yourself, well, if this guy played well against him the last time, as Georgetown goes with the 1-2-2 look, you want to see if it's a matchup problem for Georgetown. Get him back on the floor and let him find his range. Doobie off the mark from three, rebounded by Cook. Rutgers led that first meeting by eight at the half. Georgetown came back to win it by seven. 15-point turnaround. Hoyas leading this game by two. Yeah, and at the five-minute mark, it was a tied game. And two 8-0 eight, eight runs by Georgetown put Rutgers away. 
Doobie. Thought he was fouled by Cook. And a strong move to the hoop by Byron Joyce. And a good look by Doobie just then. Coming around that corner, lost control of the basketball on the right side of the floor. But what you need to do as a guard right there is regather yourself, get your thought process in line. That was a great little dish pass into the middle of the lane for Joins' finish. We are tied at 9, 12 and a half remaining. First half from the rack in Piscataway. Kenny Albert with Jim Spinarco. Glad you joined us tonight. Hibbert in the paint. They work the clock, don't they? Just about every set. It's going to be a block. Bowman with a strong move to the hoop and joins. He is called for his first. Bob Donato all over that call. Watch the step and you'll see the body slide in, joins. Did he establish position? In my mind, no. In Bob Donato's mind, no. And that's why we have a, a Georgetown player shooting free throws. And look at Gather right, Doobie right there. He knows he's in a little bit of control. Catch the ball off the floor. Catch it, then make something happen. So many guys try to make a play before they even regather the ball in and catch it. It's simple, it's basic, but well done by Doobie. Brandon Bowman in a very familiar spot in Georgetown's last game against Seton Hall on Wednesday. He was 14 of 15. Not a bad free throw line. Not a bad one. 25 points, seven boards to add to that. So that's a nice night, though, if you can get to the line 15 times. So you can put up a lot of points. Bowman missed the first, hits on the second. Darrell Owens, number 20, has checked in for Georgetown, replacing Roy Hibbert and Jimmy Inglis, number 55 in the game for Rutgers. It's a pretty good uh, Georgetown team, though, Ken, with their losses in the Big East. They lost to BC by five, Syracuse by five in overtime, Connecticut seven. So, I mean, they're a competitive team, sitting here at six and three. Great strides under John Thompson the third. They were selected 11th in the preseason right. poll. English was fouled underneath. If it's three, it's number two. John Thompson the third waiting for who's they flashed up who got the foul yet. Some confusion at the scores table. Bob Donato called over by the official scorer. Georgetown foul number 32. Yes, it was for Jeff Green. Well, that's interesting. Let's see what Georgetown decides to do. I think I know what my decision would be. Let's get somebody off the bench. There's John Thompson the third in the background right there. Now you see him pointing to a player on the bench to get him out of there. I mean, too much time to have Jeff Green pick up his third foul. And Roy Hibbert will check back in. Green turns it over. The steal by Wiggins. And then Webb gives it right back. Wallace. Nice walk. Owen. Slow things down. Yeah, they Cook from three. I was going to say their shot selection is pretty good in their sets. Nice job there. Is that Wiggins getting down on the floor? Terrific hustle by Joel Wiggins. So now you get a little build up for the fans. This is a good time for Rutgers to come down and get a bucket. Don't take a silly shot now. You have the fans warmed up. Doobie from three. English. Had a chance, and then it's pulled down by Green. I think they can get that shot any time down the floor, Kenny. I think what they should really think to think about doing, especially when you feel the crowd getting into it a little bit, get the ball going to the basket. Make the officials make a call in your favor by challenging defenders. How many times has Rutgers now goes into their little zone? Bowman from three. No offensive rebounding at all for the Hoyas that trip. And good job off the defensive boards by Rutgers. Who had their problems rebounding the basketball against this team in the first meeting. Boards were won by Georgetown 42 to 26 the first time they met. Richard foul is called on Coleman. His first nine and a half gone by in the first half. Scarlet Knights and Hoyas are tied at 10. Pair of tens up on the board, and we take a look at the rebounding, which has not been friendly. Georgetown seven to four over Rutgers early on in this basketball game, and you look at the battle of the boards with 
Rutgers once again in all seven Biggies losses this season. They have been out rebounded. How about the other night, St. John's getting to see those final numbers there? 51 to 33 off the glass. They were out rebounded and on the offensive glass, 23 to 8 by St. John's. Ollie Bailey, nice touch from the outside. Rutgers up by two. Bailey with five points. They're back into a 2-3 that has the makings of possibly a matchup. You have to wait until somebody cuts through to really identify it. And once again, look at the Georgetown team. The big guys are moving inside, but other than that, three perimeter guys around the front. Wallace from way out. Good grab. Douglas had that ball smack off his foot. Good job of rebounding, though, off the defensive blast by Rutgers. English backing in on Hibbert, two number 55s, and English wins the battle. See, even though Hibbert has that size advantage down low, one of the things about that is if you keep letting the guy bang you back and come back and back and back, you neutralize that height because he'll use power to go through it. Rutgers by four. And they have Hibbert at the free throw line. The middle of the floor is usually a good spot to look. Turnover number five committed by Georgetown. Well, here's English down low. Watch the room he gets. He just keeps pushing back and forth and just hits him a couple extra times. So really what you're doing there is you're bouncing the body and at the same time you're giving yourself some room to work but you're also at the same time positioning your legs to get strength so you can jump into the basket and into the player. Ricky Shields has checked back in for Rutgers replacing Quincy Duby as Joel Wiggin. Extends the Scarlet Knights, lead to six. And with the lead, they can continue to play the zone. Tighten it up with the three guys along the baseline. And try to force Georgetown to go deep with their shots. So you live the percentages out. Six straight points for Rutgers following the timeout. Owens off the mark, rebounded by Webb. And Georgetown not getting any offensive glass positions. Shields off the mark. And a foul called against the Scarlet Knights. It's on Bailey, and it's his first. Let's see if Georgetown tries to work this basketball into the interior of the zone a little bit better. Can possibly get that basketball in the free throw line, get some movement around there. Now they have uh, different players focusing, trying to slice through the middle of the floor. There you go, a little dribble penetration. Wallace, no good. Paley with another rebound. Now, snatching the basketball, it's been a nice job defensively, defensively off the Rutgers glass. Out of the zone, doing a good job. Shields bottled up, and Rutgers will maintain possession. Just under eight minutes to go. First half, Rutgers up by six. Who does the bottle work again? Just under eight minutes to go, first half. We take a look at our Hyundai Cool Facts. Well, you look at John Thompson the third, and you get a good look at what he's done in conference games in the Ivy League and in the Big, Big East combined. When you look at games decided in overtime or by five or fewer points, not a bad record. Very, very good in close basketball game. Off the inbound, Joel Wiggin with his second bucket. And Rutgers has scored nine consecutive points. As he touched on in that first game with Wiggins doing a good job for Gary Waters. He gets him in the lineup, and all of a sudden you get a feel that it's, hey, I play well against this certain team. It happens from time to time. From three, Ashante Cook. Georgetown, only two of nine from three-point range. And Cook puts an end to the 9-0 Rutgers run. And at those percentages, Rutgers will say, why not take some chances and let them shoot, in the back, shoot the basketball from long range until they start to hit them consistently. Pass on the day for Ali Bailey. The way to go up, though, you got to keep challenging. Good work by Bailey and good job defensively by the Hoyas. 7.05 remaining first half here at the Rack in Piscataway, New Jersey. 
Rutgers leading Georgetown by five. Kenny Albert with Jim Spinarkle. Wholesale substitutions, Byron Jones, Dan Waterstrap, and Quincy Duby in for Rutgers. Tyler Crawford in the game now for Georgetown, along with Amadou Kokini Chow. So both coaches going deep into their benches in this first half. And it doesn't change though with Rutgers. They continue to sit in that 2-3 zone with the baseline guys coming way out to the corner. Bowman double team. Cook from three again. See, it's a little thing though, Kenny, with Bowman getting the basketball just then at the foul line. He put the ball down, and what happens is the zone instinctively kind of collapses towards the ball. Then you kick it out, so you're going inside out to get better rhythm with your offense and better rhythm for your shooters. Water strap. Nice touch. There's another example of it right there. A little different look, though. Shields that time as a guard going through, slicing, trying to find a little spot on the floor. The big fella just has to stand there, wait it out, catch it, and shoot. Much easier basketball if you put the ball against on the floor with a purpose. The Rutgers bench has outscored the Georgetown bench 9 0. Cook with the two threes. There's Crawford. Kilkenny Chow did not get the roll. Rebounded by Jones. Right there, though. That was a good look. Georgetown had good penetration once again. Oh, be careful. Water strap. This time, no good. And there were four blue jerseys underneath the basket. And did you notice it was the same type of set? set the shield was out of control, and the shooter, Water Strap, was out of control. Oh, beautiful yeah. pass from Cook to Tyler Crawford. Crawford. Well, we've spoken a lot about Rutgers rebounding out of the defensive zone, doing a good job in the zone. We touched on the poor shooting for Georgetown from long range. You look up, they're only down two points. It's just a little over five minutes to go, so. Rutgers led by eight moments ago. Cook hit two threes, and then set up Crawford for that last Georgetown bucket. The way they play, and Georgetown takes time off the clock. You wouldn't think it's going to be that highest scoring game. Well, Wiggins! Now three for three off the bench. Keep him on the floor against the Hoyas. Uh, on the other end, Bowman no good. Good clearance, good traffic rebound. Uh, Rutgers has to make a good decision coming down the floor. Keep the fans involved. You keep them involved by playing solid basketball. Everybody getting their touches and taking good shots off execution. What is it about Georgetown that brings out the best in Joel Wiggins? You know, sometimes it's matchups, Ken. I tell you, it's a uh, funny thing. I remember in college, playing in the ACC, I used to have good nights against Maryland for some reason. Couldn't figure out why. It's just personnel. You gotta learn what they what they do defensively. You look for some of their weaknesses and you try to take advantage of them. The lefty Brazil unable to come up with a plan to stop Jim <laughs> Uh, you know, lefty went to Duke University, so maybe he was going easy on me. Ball called on Byron Joins, his second. Rutgers nine, and Ali Bailey joins. And Marquise Webb checks back in, Waterstrat and Joins sit down. Third. And a timeout called by Georgetown. A 30 second timeout with 4-10 remaining in this first half. And we take a look at the standings, and obviously BC sitting on top at 19 and 0 and 8 and 0 in the conference. And they have a game over at the uh, East Rutherford, New Jersey tonight against Seton Hall. We look at Georgetown and Rutgers where they sit. We have teams like Syracuse, Pitt, Connecticut, a nice top five right there with Notre Dame knocking on the door. You know, but it's interesting. We'll keep an eye on some of the scores. I believe that Seton Hall. Um, Boston College game just probably tipping off. I think that was a 7.30 game tonight. So we'll keep an eye on that one, obviously, over in East Rutherford, because that will be interesting to see BC convince it all up and down so far this year, but on their home court can get it going. Seton Hall beat Rutgers at home for one of their two Big East wins. Just over four minutes remaining, first half from the rack. Rutgers leading Georgetown by three. Cook and Wallace in the backcourt. Owens, Crawford, and Kilkenny Chow up front for the Hornets. Seton Hall will be in here next round, Tuesday night. 
Here we go. Good drive. Good hands on the strip. The hose of Weber came back and got it. Webb has done a terrific job defensively all season long for the Scarlet Knights. Five on the shot clock. Cook. Kilkenny Chow gets the roll. I like the way you pronounce that name. Kilkenny Chow. Thank you. <laughs> nice little pick and roll there, though. Roll towards the middle of the hoop. Good things will happen. Rutgers by two. Doobie with Shields, Wigan, Webb, and Bailey. Doobie gives it away. Good balance at the defensive end. Hoyas with a patient attack. Unless they really have a clear-cut advantage. Look, doesn't look as if they want to take advantage and try to go transition with Rutgers. They'll just get back into their sets. And here we go with the screens again. This time against a man-to-man -man defense. A oh, little lazy pass. And then Webb gives it right back. Cook with the outlet. Owens, we are tied at 22. Now, it's one thing to turn the basketball over like Georgetown did when you're attacking at your own basket. But the way that Rutgers gave it up right about half court allows for easier buckets going the other way. Remember, Shields won three-point field goal shy of tying the Rutgers all-time record. There's a tall defender on him all game so far. Crawford. And the blocking foul is called on Doobie. His first. Just over two minutes remaining. First half, we are tied at 22. T minus 20 seconds and counting. We are go. Guidance internal program confirmed. 10, 9, 8, 7. Ignition sequence start. 4, 3, 2, 1. All engines running. Liftoff. We have liftoff at 8.14 in the morning. The first ever G6. With action, anything is possible. Starting around 21. Tied at 22. Big first half off the bench for Rutgers senior Joel Wigan. And once again, it's a feel against certain opponents. And Wigan obviously very comfortable against Georgetown. They'll turn around, jump shot right there. Planted that right foot strongly to get a good look at the basket. Six points tonight already, three of three. 23 points in the first meeting where he went nine of 13 from the floor. Played 38 out of 40 minutes in that first contest. So once again, Gary Waters will keep him on the floor as much as he can until he proves him wrong that he's not going to be playing efficient basketball against Georgetown. Tyler Crawford to the free throw line has attempted only three free throws all season. Freshman out of Staunton, Virginia, co-player of the year in the state of Virginia as a high school senior. Crawford gives Georgetown a two-point lead. Hoyas, Jim, have gone on a 14-4 run following the 9-0 run by Rutgers. Well, it's that steadying influence at the defensive end where they're pestering Doobie and the guards, Shields, when they're out there. And also their sets coming down the offensive end. They're very, very patient, continue to look a little bit extra for inside opportunities. Doobie looking to gain a step on Cook. He pulls up, and we are tied at 24. Doobie is very good at putting the ball on the floor, dribbling at somebody, and kind of inching his way in and looking for opportunities after you fumble a little bit. You go back and you stutter step a little defensively. That's when he likes to pull up. Still looking at the post, Georgetown. Now it's a high post. Pretty well defended by Rutgers out of the man-to-man. -man. Cook off the back of the rim from three. Crawford the rebound. It's batted out and kept alive by Georgetown. Ray Reed with one minute remaining in the half. He gave up 23 offensive boards to St. John's the other night, albeit the shooting was not very good. Let's just put it that way and keep it that way. But Rutgers could not allow teams to get second opportunities against them. 
Crawford, he nails it. That's exactly why, Kenny. Put three more on the board. And it's demoralizing to a team. You work so hard, especially with the way Georgetown plays their offensive sets. They wear the clock down, so you have to make sure you box out and come up with the basketball and the defensive glass. Shields from three. Offensive rebound, Webb. Right now the shot clock has been turned right. off. Last shot opportunity to see if Georgetown just sits on it. Cook takes it all the way. I think Rutgers thought they were going to sit on it. The decision to go the other way. Gary Waters is not a happy camper on the sidelines. He felt that Webb was really jumped on and banged and bumped. Didn't get the call, and the fans are also chipping in to help Gary with the lack of support for the officials. Well, Georgetown leading by five as we check out top 25 scores. Now yeah, number three, Kansas, 13-pointer over Nebraska. If you look at Duke, a strong effort by them today. Georgia Tech having problems getting the ball inside against them. And J.J. Redick, I believe, had 26 shooting the ball from long range. Kentucky with another big win, number four. They have a solid team. Big, of course, the front lines. Arizona, another team that can go up and down the court and score points. A big win over Stanford to stay in the hunt with Washington in the Pac-10. Wake Forest, I mean, they're a dangerous team. Kenny, at number seven right now, a good team. And how about Charlotte? 91-90 over Cincinnati. So some pretty good action, a good day of basketball across the board. And and Mike Krzyzewski in that Duke game went fainted for a minute or two. And reports are that he's okay. Final seconds. Wiggin off balance. No good. And that will do it for the first half. So after Rutgers scored nine consecutive points, Georgetown with Cook leading the way. He had a pair of threes. The Hoyas finished the half on a 19-6 run. They lead Rutgers by five. Defeat Georgetown 61-60 and advance to the semifinals. This Big East Championship flashback has been brought to you by Aero Postel, providing scholarships through sponsorships. Get an eyeful of the Hyundai Sonata, named highest ranked entry midsize car in initial quality by JD Power and Associates. The Sonata is handsomely styled, loaded with standard features, and built with a commitment to initial quality and detects links between diet and cancer. The history of a uniquely American musical genre is preserved, and professors expand our understanding of culture and society. From the discovery of ancient stone tools to promising advances in the treatment of spinal cord injuries. Learn and discover at Rutgers, New Jersey State University. Welcome back to Big East Basketball. We come to you from the rack in Piscataway, New Jersey. Georgetown leading Rutgers at the half by five. Kenny Albert with Jim Spinarkle and Jim. It was a first half of runs. Rutgers at right. one point scored nine consecutive points, but then Georgetown finished the half on a 19 to six spurt. And one of the things with Georgetown, I think it's a couple of things. Defensively, they kind of shored up a little bit. It slowed Rutgers down a bit in terms of their half court sets. But at the other end of the floor, offensively, John Thompson III, as Pete Carrill did with Princeton, imploring a little bit of that Princeton offense where they distribute the basketball, they set screens, they take a lot of time off the clock, and you better rebound the basketball when they shoot if they miss. Both teams got a lift off their bench. Wigan doing the nice job for right. Rutgers, and Tyler Crawford with seven off the bench for Georgetown. Exactly, and guys getting opportunities to play, because in this type of game, you know, coaches are trying to feel out the chemistry. They're trying to look for guys who feel comfortable. Wigan is one of them. We touched on it earlier. In the first game, he scored 23 points, so Gary Waters is going to have him on the floor as much as possible. But really, it's those second-chance opportunities. It was 5-0 in favor of Georgetown. You look at the scoreboard, it's 29-24. Yeah. It's pretty simple. Keep them off the glass. So a five-point lead for the Hoyas as we take a look back at first half highlights and we touched on Rutgers and Wigan three for four little pull up off the dribble going to his right the next take we'll take a look at him coming to his left coming off the screen getting the basketball and just turning shooting so three for four good effort for him in the first half here and Quincy Dubia, a guy who is one for four, struggling, shooting the ball, finding it to go down. But there's a nice little drifter through the middle of the floor, going to his left and pulling up. Shante Cook shooting the ball very nicely, deep, long range. 
two for five, but finding some spots against the Rutgers zone, so he was effective there in bringing Georgetown back a little bit. But those turnovers, Cook here with the steal, gives the ball to Darrell Owens, who finishes it off with the easy snowbird. Five-point lead for Georgetown, and you'll take a look at some of these stats. But even with the shooting, three-point field goals, we have it highlighted there a little bit, four of 13 for Georgetown, so expect if Rutgers can get back and get to this lead, or even if they may go back to their zone, but take a look at those second chance points again. 5-0, that's the difference in our ball game. Georgetown leading by five at the half. They beat Rutgers by seven back in January. We'll have the second half for you right after these messages. Basketball game. And Villanova over Providence. Providence still struggling to get out of the zero column on the win column. 0-7 in Big East play, and Villanova with some pretty good wins this year. And some pretty good romps. One against Rutgers, one against Kansas earlier about two weeks ago. And Jim, our leading scorers, Shante Cook, in double figures with 10, including a pair of three-point field goals. Tyler Crawford with seven off the bench for Georgetown, and Joel Wigan off the bench, leading Rutgers with six. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if Rutgers, Kenny, the other night when we were watching the St. John's Rutgers game, remember we were talking about St. John's at some point in that second half, about 12, 13 minutes left, they were so lethargic that they had to switch their defense and go full court, and that's what got some excitement in the building. I think Rutgers, at some point in this basketball game, if they continue to be down and let Georgetown methodically chip away at the clock, Maybe you'll see them extend, maybe full court, a little trap, change it up a little bit. And that helps to get your guys moving on the offensive end also. Jim, a couple of uh, non-starters start the second half for Georgetown. Tyler Crawford, who scored seven in the first half, and Amadou Lukeni Jow, along with Jeff Green, Shante Cook, and Jonathan Wallace. So Brandon Bowman, the leading scorer for the Hoyas, on the bench to begin the second half, and Cook found an open lane to the hoop. A little bit of a slice through the lane. Jeff Green picked up his two fouls early. He only played a little bit of time in that first half, 10 minutes, so he's happy to be back on the floor. As I'm sure John Thompson is very happy to have him out there. And Rutgers with their starting five on the floor. Joins Bailey, Webb, Shields, and Doobie. Shields and Doobie combined for only six first half points. They shot two of eight combined. And in the last two and a half games, the loss to going over, the loss to St. John's in the first half tonight, Jim. Shields and Doobie, 11 of 50. It's not going to cut it, huh? Not going to cut it right around 20%, just a touch above. How fast they figure that out. <laughs> Duke education. <laughs> Joins double team. Three on the shot clock. Oh. And Rutgers will maintain possession. Wallace with the strip, but he stepped out of bounds. You want to try to get that, throw that down low at the bottom of your legs. The knees are below. What are they going to do? Give it full possession, I guess. They reset the shot clock. clock yeah. Because they're saying that he actually had possession, which I think he did. He actually caught the ball and then stepped out of bounds. So that's a quick call. That's a good call. Joel Wigan has checked in now for Rutgers. Pat Driscoll on the call. Webb through the lane. Joins. Unable to control. Oh. Joins Cook, everybody banging away, but that was a good step in by Cook sliding right in. Defensively there, stopping it. Brian Joins called for his third as we check out Shields and Doobie from three on the season. They started hot and have gotten cold in the last three games. Uh, it's a big number, 85 of the team's 105. Boy, the number's just not stacking up. Guys are just, you know, you go through se sequences and different games where you lose your confidence a little bit. A shot that you can normally make, 0 for 4 tonight from the three-point stripe, just can't find the range. Little step, it goes the other way. Bob Donato with the call. Jonathan Wallace is whistled for the travel, only the seventh Georgetown turnover. Georgetown has outscored Rutgers 21 to 6. Ever since Rutgers went on their 9-0 run to take an eight-point lead, it's Georgetown by seven. And if I'm Gary Waters, i got to really be concerned with the fact that I've only scored 24 points. I mean, okay, it's great that they're holding Georgetown to 31 and their defense is okay, but 
Got to find a way to score. Pass a bit too hard from Doobie, intended for Bailey. But when it hits in the numbers, Ken, you, you have to catch that one. Bailey has to retrieve it. Wallace down low for Green. Good passing by the Hoyas. And here they come. They don't have anything with their attack. And now from three, Green no good. English with the lead pass for Webb. Spinning into the paint, and he draws a foul. So there's a little transition basketball for Rutgers. They'd like to open this thing up a little bit. A good push just then by Webb. Forced the action, good outlet pass, get it going down the floor. And see, now he recognizes good spin. Good call from the officiating crew. Cook never established position, sliding, put the knee out. Number one on Cook. Rutgers trailing by its seven. Here's Bailey. Ali Bailey cuts the Georgetown lead to five. That's a great flash by Bailey because that allows him to pull Jeff Green out of the back. What Green is doing, he's laying back so the Rutgers team can't post up anybody. Bailey coming up, brings Green from underneath the basket and is able to go by him. A five-point Georgetown lead. Three minutes in, second half. Crawford from three. Got a strong rebound pulled down by Ali Bailey. Gary Waters wants to play the percentages. Forced the Hoyas away from the hoop. Doobie no good. Cook just beat Wiggin to the loose ball. Hoyas will work the clock down. Brandon Bowman getting set to check in. Leading score for Georgetown at just under 16 per game. Has only three today. So John clock under 10, excuse me, Jim. Straight up 2-3 zone, but the players are so patient with it. Good strip almost. And then Green lays it in. Wigan had his hand on that basketball. Thought it was going to go the other way. He hit the ball so hard, he's holding his right hand. But Green gets the good touch, bounces his way. And Georgetown continues to maintain control of the tempo of this basketball game. Rutgers can't get it going up or down at all. Wiggin, wide open, short. Yep, reach in, frustration. Easy call for Bob Donato. First personal on Wiggin, a timeout on the floor. Early second half, it's Georgetown by seven. College basketball fans, get ready for the 2005 Big East Women's Basketball Championship presented by State Farm. March 5th through the 8th at the Hartford Civic Center in Hartford, Connecticut. See all 12 Big East Women's Basketball teams battle for the Big East Championship Tournament title. For tickets and more information, call 860-525-4500. That's 860-525-4500. Or log on to Ticketmaster.com. Here at the rack as Rutgers looks to win their second Big East game and their freshman forward Ali and Bailey leading the way for the Scarlet Knights with seven on the other end. Georgetown freshman Jeff Green with five. And really you get opportunities. Bailey putting that ball down one more time on the floor. Good strong dribble. Green gets an easy one right there with the deflection of Wiggin. Goes the other way and Green not seeing much time in that first half because of foul troubles. Bailey with his seven points. Green picked up the two early fouls. Cook and Wallace in the backcourt. The Georgetown Bowman up front with Green and Crawford. Georgetown leading by seven. They have trailed by as many as eight. Wallace lets one go from three. Jonathan Wallace, a 42% shooter from behind the arc. And one of the things about playing the zone and allowing shots, if they start to bury him, then you're going to have to come out of it quickly. So they'll look for Gary Waters to make a change now. As Shields is short, still looking for that one three-point field goal, which would tie Jeff Billett for the all-time Rutgers record. Oops, a little extra step there, wasn't it? Trembling. How about the pass, though, from Cook? It's yeah, that was dandy, wasn't it? A nice, quick look. 
You know, what happens with Georgetown is they kind of lull you to sleep right there. They had an opportunity where you thought you might see a break going down the other way. They slow it down, but then if they see an opening after that slowdown, they'll try to pick you apart in a hurry. Boyers with their biggest lead of the night. Whoa, a little contact, wouldn't you say? Cook and Shields. Cook's going to get the ball going against him. We'll see some contact tomorrow. Are you ready for the Super Bowl? I'm ready to go. It's a great eating day, isn't it? That's my number one priority. That's it. And then I think there's a ball game to watch. Marquise Lab with his first bucket. Starting tight end for the Eagles is LJ Smith, Rutgers product, who was at the Rutgers Villanova game last Saturday night. And I know you uh, think the Eagles are in a throw with an upset, huh? Well, <laughs> I think they'll keep it close. I think hard, they hard, to, hard to pick against Bill Belichick. Yeah. Been so successful. Brady's been successful. And, you know, I just hope the two quarterbacks play well. I hope Tom Brady plays well. I hope Donovan McGann plays well, because that'll obviously drive the type and style of the football game we'll see tomorrow. Now, since I saw you last on Wednesday, I did some research. Okay. Donovan McNabb played in 19 basketball okay. games for Syracuse. Had his career game against Georgetown. Here we go. <laughs> Here's Bowman in the paint. Brandon Bowman showing the nice touch. He was back on February 8th, 1997. Syracuse against Georgetown. McNabb with 10 points, 6 rebounds against the Lions. Nice call. You ever sleep? <laughs> I have another one for you. <laughs> Doobie from three. I'll tell you, Doobie would like one of those to go down for him. Georgetown by ten. Bowman from three. Second chances. Tyler Crawford. He's got it. A 12-point. Georgetown lead. Excuse me, Kenny. Might be time as it is right now to talk things over. Getting out of control for the Rutgers fans and the players alike. A spark off the bench from Tyler Crawford. He now has nine. Get an eyeful of the Hyundai Sonata. Named highest ranked entry makers by 12. Just over six minutes gone by in this second half. Officially a sellout. Just over 8,000. The fifth sellout this season. The 53rd in the history of the rack. And one of the 8,007 in attendance, the all-time leading scorer there at Rutgers, Phil Sellers. A great player, a hard-nosed guy, around 6'4", 6'5". Could shoot the basketball, could work you going down low. Good mixture of versatility in his game. You take a look at his retired jersey. One of three that sit up on that side of the building. Here's Gooby. 1975-76, Rutgers squad won their first 31 games right. before dropping a pair in the Final Four. Trying to think that year was at Michigan, wasn't it? That historic Scarlet Knights run. Yep. Tom Nearly Brown. 30 years ago. Hard to believe, isn't it? Georgetown leading by 12 as they work some more time off the clock. Bowman, green on the follow, rebounded by Joins. Good grab there by Doobie. They got to get something to happen. Shields a little hesitant to shoot that one. Bob Donato with the call, so Ricky Shields will head to the free throw line. Foul called on Green, his third. Yeah, Shields. Georgetown surrendering at first with the long ball, but making a smart decision with his team down 12 to attack and try to get to the free throw line. They got to get some confidence. They got to get some points on the board. It only scored four points prior to that free throw. We're seeing 13 minutes even on the clock, so still six points in seven minutes. You got to pick it up a little bit. Georgetown by 10. Boy is finally getting across. Wallace with Cook. Bowman, Green, and Crawford. Right. One to two, Kenny, out loud. How long Rutgers will stay in this zone? Because if you watch the shot clock, it's down to 10 right there with that shot up in the air. And if you give up opportunities like this, we'll see if they take another 25 seconds off the clock. 
You just can't have a minute per possession. It's just too much time working against a 10-point lead. Bowman. Good. Good work by the Hoyas. John Thompson III has been playing very patiently, very smartly, and really working the clock, just as he did with his Princeton teams. John Thompson III looking for his first win here at the Rack. 0-2 with Princeton. In fact, he was 0-5 overall against Rutgers. As head coach at Princeton, did beat Rutgers earlier this season. out on the floor with just under 12 minutes remaining in the second half in Georgetown leading by 12. Hoy is in control. They trail by as many as eight in the first half. A 20-point turnaround. T-minus 20 seconds and counting. We are go. Guidance internal program confirmed. 10, 9, 8, 7, ignition sequence start. 4, 3, 2, 1, all engines running. Liftoff. We have liftoff at 8.14 in the morning. The first ever G6. With action, anything is possible. Starting around 21.3. See your local Pontiac dealer. by 12, just under 12 minutes remaining, second half. It's Big East Hoops again next week, noon Eastern. On Saturday, as Akeem Warwick and Jerry McNamara lead Syracuse into Villanova, take on the explosive backcourt duo of Randy Foy and Alan Ray. Syracuse and Villanova next Saturday at noon. Let's see if Rutgers can get a hoop right here, and I would anticipate some type of style change on the defensive end. Shields from three, joins, offensive right, got rebound, it. it's good, and the foul. A terrific effort by Joins on the offensive glass against a couple of Hoyas. Shots from the right side of the floor when they miss, 75% of them will kick to the left side. Joins with terrific position, three Hoyas around him. Pick your, your poison in terms of who gets the foul right there. Got a lot of bumping and pushing and shoving. Let's see if they switch it up. Yep, here they come. Different look defensively. Finally making a change. Foul was called on Phil Kenny Chow, his first. Only the second offensive rebound by Rutgers. And it led to the three-point play by Joins. Now Rutgers settles back into a man-to-man -man defense right now. So a double switch, the full court extension, and back to a different look. Shot clock. Cook with the fadeaway. Here comes the run. If Rutgers is going to make it, they have to springboard off of that three point play by Joins in this defensive stop right here at, dead, at 11 minutes left in this basketball game. Rutgers trailing by nine. Crowd into it. Yep, finally. Let's see if they can respond with one bucket right here. Holding foul is called on Wallace. His first. Five on the team right now, so that's a sign that. Rutgers should continue to drive the basketball towards the bucket. Get that, get to the free throw line, stop the clock. Bailey. A little rebounded by Cook. Little reverse pivot shot right there by Bailey. Gave him some space, just couldn't get it to go down. Georgetown lead as we approach the midway point of this second half and John Thompson the third wants to talk things Georgia. over. Third and second timeout as we check out some Big East scores. Well, wow, going around again, we talked about Connecticut over St. John's and Boston College up five at the half within the first half with uh, Seton Hall. But take a look on the right side. Pittsburgh 78, a loser to West Virginia in overtime, 83-78. Villanova continues to play good basketball with Jay Wright, but back to Pittsburgh. Ken, they've been having some problems. Five and two in the league. Now this makes it five and three. 
Just a team that really can't find themselves and get that consistency. Lost to Bucknell earlier this right. season. You ready for my Super Bowl trivia? Sure, go ahead. Let's see what you have. It ties in with the Hoyas. Okay. And we'll get to it in a moment. First hour BMW ultimate drive of the game. And Cook going through the middle, slicing through two players and putting in an easy one, trip to the basket. We'll give some time to think about this one, but the question is, who is the 20th all-time rebounder in Georgetown history? And it ties in with the Super Bowl. Here's Cook driving baseline, and he gets the roll. Pass me the media guide, will you? No cheating. <laughs> Ties in with the Super Bowl. I'll give some thought to that. 20th all-time right. rebounder in Georgetown history. In fact, he led Georgetown in rebounding twice. Back-to-back -back years. Ricky Shields. Another offensive rebound for Joins. Fans are warming up, and so is Joins. He's riding it. He's taking the wave of the excitement in this building right now, and he's stepping it up. He needs the four other guys on this floor, Bailey in particular with the big guys, to continue to help him. Georgetown by nine. Clock keeps disappearing, no Ken up there, nearing nine minutes. Ray Reed has checked in for Georgetown. Ten on the shot clock. Now five on the shot clock. Good job by Bailey. That's the last stop to go out. Short. Off the back of the rim, kept alive by Ray Reed. And the opportunity to take more time off the clock with the lead that they have at 44-35. Reed to the hoop. And Pat Driscoll says, stay right here. Uh, the Rutgers bench is furious down there in. That's Gary Waters with the black shirt on. He's taking his jacket off. Byron joins, call for his fourth. Joins with two big offensive rebounds, a pair of putbacks last couple of minutes, yeah. and he receives an ice ovation from the crowd as he sits down with the four personal fouls. Yeah, and a well-deserved round of applause right there, doing that, some good effort on the offensive glass, as you mentioned, trying to spark this team a little bit. Replaced by Dan Waterstrap, the freshman out of Dearborn Heights, Michigan. The Georgetown gets a lead, though. They're brutal with the way they just space the floor. They're very patient. They're willing to take one shot position and make sure they get a good one. Here's the kick out. See, it's established down low. Kick it out. Get it back to green. Turn around. Jump a very well executed series there with the lead. Inch of their way up to an 11 point lead. That's great basketball. Looking inside twice because the defender will release down low in the blocks. And then on the other end, they've allowed only 35 points. Georgetown leads the Big East in scoring defense, allowing just under 60 per game. Ali Bailey going glass. Boy, is that ever a big sigh of relief for Ali Bailey? Just then he lost control just a second before he took that shot, but it went down. A look at the Hoyers, though, Kenny. They come out towards the, the big R in the middle of the floor. They're sitting at half court for the first minute or so. And now a reach in on Bailey. It's his second. A timeout with 7.47 remaining. In the second half, Georgetown leading Rutgers by nine points. Five years, five national championships. A legacy of excellence established more than 25 years ago has elevated the Big East Conference to the very pinnacle of college basketball. And the best is yet to come. Hollywood's biggest night goes high def with E! Live from the red carpet at the 77th Annual Academy Awards. Catch the buzz with all the glitz and all the glamour with E! on NHD on Comcast with high definition. The Academy Award party begins on the red carpet with E! and NHD. All day coverage, February 27th, beginning at noon with NHD and E! Only on cable. Get Comcast Digital Cable. It's a great way to watch NHD in high definition.
after the morning rush is done, it's your morning. Welcome to your morning. I'm Cindy Edwards. And I'm Kathy Ballou. Thanks for joining us. Something different. Available only on CNA. Your morning parenting tips. Mondays, 9 Eastern on CNA. Your morning parenting tips are brought to you by PNC Grow Up Great, a program to help prepare kids for school every day. Some of the Rutgers faithful on hand tonight at the rack. Time now for our Pontiac game-changing performance. And Ashanti Cook has done it all with his 14 points, 6 of 11 from the floor. From the outside, doing a nice job, delivering the goods as he penetrates through the middle of the floor. Working the baseline for a layup, and then having the ability to break people down. And off the dribble, shooting the basketball, passing it. A nice evening so far with the Hoyers with their lead right now. 14 points, 5 assists for Cook. 7.5 to go. Bowman pushing off for Owens. Georgetown again working the clock, as we've seen on so many of their possessions tonight. Now Reed driving baseline on a blocking foul is the call for Pat Driscoll. All right, so now you get 35 seconds again. You take a look at numbers that Cook has put up as he touched up five assists, six of 11 from the floor for his 14 points. Georgetown gets the basketball again with 7.20 left with their lead. But that was a breakdown with nine seconds on the shot clock, so they're just very, very patient. That last foul called on Joel Wigan, his second. Green directing traffic. You know, Georgetown with John Thompson III's father as the coach. is always a very good defensive squad. So he has them playing defensively and sound principles defensively also. Learned a few lessons from good old dad. Third foul on Ashante Cook. Full court there for Georgetown, just been changing it up. Wigan wide open from three. And what a scrap. Crashing the boards, draws the foul. Wow. Good positioning right there for him as he went after that basketball. I thought he may have pushed off first, too. He's an energetic guy, kind of pumped the fans up a little bit. Brandon Bowman called for his second. The fans chanting water strap. Here at the rack in Piscataway. And water strap to the free throw line. Three of six on the year. Make it three of seven. And points they just can't give away. He did hit two big ones in the final minute against Syracuse. Yep. The Georgetown lead. Remains nine. Bowman from three. And an out. Oh, that's a oh boy, is that ever a tough spot to stop on a floor like that? Straddling the midcourt line. <laughs> yeah, that's not your first choice. Bailey, good effort to get it there. Looked like he was playing Twister. <laughs> you remember that, huh? Shields from three. He is now. 0 for 5 from three-point range. Rutgers has not made a three-pointer today. They are now 0 for 9. And that is one that they, boy, oh boy, did they ever need that ball to go through the hoop just then. But down the other end, backcourt cut. Oh, what a pass, and the bucket for Ashante Cook. We talked about Green on the open in terms of trying to score points. We also talked about him with his little flip passes at that high post level. Beautiful dish on the backcourt cut. Georgetown by 11, five and a half remaining. Wigan, Joel Wigan now with eight off the bench. I think Rutgers has to pick up a little bit more, Kenny. It's, they're sagging back defensively. They're sagging back with the clock working against them also. Just can't allow that much time to go off. Green double teamed and then Bowman was pushed. Wigan tried to get away with one. And he is called for his third personal foul. Watch the backcourt cut. Here it comes, a little fake out. Doobie bites on it, turns his back on the basketball. Layup, Georgetown. Go the other way. Do you have any guesses on the trivia question? 
Oh, I forgot about that. You notice how conveniently I forgot about that? Well, this gentleman, who is 20th all-time in Georgetown history in rebounds, who led the Hoyas in rebounding in the 1959-60 season and again in 60-61. I was just going to say, if it's that guy. And that guy that is, is... I don't know. What year was it? 59? 59-60 and 60-61. 59, I was two years old. Georgetown, an avid follower of the game, though, I might add. <laughs> I don't have an answer. All right, the viewers are waiting. The answer is Paul <laughs> Tagliabue. Very good, Union City, New Jersey native. The NFL commissioner. Absolutely. Who averaged in his Georgetown career nine rebounds per game. And to put that in perspective, Patrick Ewing averaged 9.2. There you go. See, I was thinking more players and maybe advertisers for the football game tomorrow. The commissioner. So the commissioner, the 20th all-time leading rebounder in Georgetown history. Take a look at Shields and Doobie. They combined 0 for 8 from 3 in the game tonight. And combined 2 of 15. Shields is 1 for 8 overall. Doobie there's one for seven. They have scored a combined eight points. And then you add on the last two full games. So in, in the last two and four-fifths games, they've combined to score only 36 points. Well, backdoor cuts a plenty. Darrell Owens yeah. with the finish. Now here's the strategy behind that in terms of why it's so successful. Think about defensively. You're now down 11 points, you're down 9, so if you're Rutgers, you have to extend your defense and try to play the passing lanes better. Patient basketball teams understand that. A guy like John Thompson III, with his Princeton, quasi-Princeton mentality in terms of the way they run their offensive set, they'll be patient, they'll break you down on back doors, they know they can bait you into it because you're leaning towards the other end of the floor. Remember, the home team had won the last seven games in this series. Webb. And Marquise Webb will head to the free throw line as Jeff Clark calls the foul on Amadou Kilkenny Jeff. It's his second. Over the years, we've seen Princeton do well. And John Thompson in his four years at Princeton with three Ivy League champs, two NCAA tournament appearances. And what he always looks for when you play this style is it's very helpful to get a lead. If you don't get a lead, it's, it makes it more difficult to be patient and play these sets because the clock works against you in your own style. But when they get the lead, and when the NCAA games in particular, when Princeton over the years has gotten a little bit of lead, that's when they've really rattled somebody, some people in terms of getting those upset wins. Georgetown trailed this game by eight in the first half. Sam scenario was their first game against Rutgers. They trailed by eight at halftime. One by seven. Today they trail by eight. Now lead by ten. Here comes some hard trapping. A floater across. You have to get that. Webb comes up with it. He's smart and get a good shot right here. Shields from three. 0 for six. Keep going up underneath. Good job by Bailey on the offensive glass. Now to scramble. And now Georgetown quickly back the other way, and Green had it deflect off his fingertips. Now what you're trying to do is you're trying to get Georgetown to play out of character at the offensive end. Come down and be a little ragtag. It might go the other way, though. Offensive foul is the call on Ricky Shields. That's a backbreaker, but I think it's the correct call. Shields trying to keep the momentum going. You tell me, it looks pretty good to me, chest to chest. It looks like Jeff Green has established his position. Dang, he's down. It's a tough call. The fans don't like it, but it's the correct call. And now another foul is called on Shields just seconds later. And Gary Waters knows this is panic time right now. Not the panic in the sense that you want to make mistakes and just do careless basketball things. It's panic time because the clock has worked against them. It's 4-12 left. You're still down eight. You got to push the panic button a little bit. Get these guys going. Get their sense of urgency up. And really, that's about, for a minute and a half there, Kenny, that's the best sense of urgency basketball we've seen with them this, this tonight. Dante Cook, 17 points, six assists. And he extends the Georgetown lead to 10.
Rutgers led by as many as eight in the first half. It's now a 10-point Georgetown lead with four minutes left here in the second half. And that 42 number is an interesting number defensively. The Hoyas like to shut people down, have to go to the basket. Shields triple team, lost the handle, but Rutgers will maintain possession. But first, the timeout, 3.51 on the clock. It's the Hoyas leading Gary Waters' Scarlet Knights by 10. Tires, proud to be the official tire of the Big East Conference. Cooper Tires, don't give up a thing. And by BMW and the BMW 3 Series with all-wheel drive. Under four minutes remaining, Tooby hits the three. You must do believe here in this building, too. Shirts they had last year. Three on one break by Georgetown. Look at the decision. Pull it back out. Still up seven. Some might argue on three on one opportunities, though you still have to attack. It's a little late. Or I should say still early with a lot of time left on the clock. Good backdoor cut again. Boy, Green comes up to the top of the key area, the foul line area, and then backdoor cuts are just all over. By the way, that three-point field goal a moment ago by Duby, the first for Rutgers tonight. They are now one for 11. Nine-point Georgetown lead under three minutes. Wallace is called for the foul. His second. Georgetown foul number two, Jonathan Wallace. His second, the Hoyas, nine-point foul. Substitution for Rutgers. Danny Casada checks in for the first time. A high school teammate for one year of Abadou Coquetti Jow at St. Albans down in Washington. Casada, the Washington Player of the Year, as named by USA Today last season. Webb hitting a pair of free throws, pulling Rutgers back to within seven, and Gary Waters calling a 30-second timeout. For the Georgetown Hoyas, who have already surpassed their win total of a year ago coming into this game. Only six regular season games remaining. And a schedule right there. I mean, a couple of those ats, four of the five right there in the next five. But, um, you know, teams that they can compete with, they're an inch in their way up with Pittsburgh losing tonight. Georgetown will slide into third position in the, the Big East with a win tonight if they can hold on. So teams that they're competing with. And the losses they've had, as we touched on early in this broadcast, and there are losses in the Big East. They lost to BC by five, Cuse by five. And Kinetic by seven, so they've been very competitive, even in the games that they've lost. Cook gets it in, and Bowman lost the handle. Here's Duby from three. And the foul is called against the Hoyas. John Thompson, the third, is down his end, saying, will somebody please explain to me how Bowman slipped on the floor just then? My guess was that somebody on Rutgers had their foot dragging his, and that's why he went to the floor with it. Marquise Webb back to the free throw line as Ricky Shields gets set to check back in for Rutgers. Gary Waters has to figure out a way to make this clock stay at 245. Every possession, and maybe go to his couple of take some chances and fouls, but he's got to keep the clock time on this clock as long as he possibly can. Stop the clock the best of your ability. If you have to put Georgetown on the line right now, you keep putting him on the line. Webb hits one of two. It's a six-point game. Georgetown is led by as many as 12 this half. There's another floater. Obviously not a great decision to go diagonal. About 50 feet up court. Very difficult to connect on that because it's got to be so high in the air because you have guys who can play and get to the ball, the passing lane, with the differential between the two players. Huge 
possession right here at both ends of the floor. Offensively for Rutgers, see if Georgetown can put the stop on them. Rutgers with their five starters on the court. Got to attack the basket, go towards the basket, drag it in, and then kick back to your three if you have it. Oh, well protected oh, wow. from behind by Jeff Green, who had five blocks in the first game against Rutgers. Boy, that baby took apart half the camera, I think, underneath that basket. Here comes the drive, Green with the block. <laughs> Emphatically. See if Doobie tries to put, whoop, he's gonna push off a little bit. Ray Reed is called for the foul, it's his first. First time foul number five, Ray Reed. Doobie right around the 70% mark, goes to the line. Two for two so far tonight. seconds to hold on here if they can and then start the buses to get out but they have they'll have a, a basically a big battle on their hands for the last two minutes and change and 11 4 Rutgers run a much smaller lineup on the floor for Rutgers, which will allow them to press, which will allow them to take some gambles on steals, and also the quickness to get the guys so they can foul. Here comes the long one again. Bowman the recipient, and now he pulls it back out. I'm not so sure Rutgers can't, shouldn't come out and start to really play aggressively, and if they just foul somebody, so be it. Four-point lead. Still enough time, but keep playing aggressively. Force Georgetown to go a little quicker. Under two minutes remaining. And a foul called underneath that's on Webb. It's his first. Let's take a look now at our defensive player of the game, brought to you by Cooper Tires. Don't give up the face. And Jeff Green has been very active defensively helping out. Started this game off with two quick fouls, but has progressed at a block down the other end that saved the bucket. Stepping across and doing a very good job defensively. Jonathan Wallace, his first trip for the free throw line, 76% for the year. We'll take a look at this block. You see Webb coming down the lane. He gets position and uh, not in this house, even though it's on the road. Jeff Green with a quick step across, block shot, a good save, and a big play at the end of this basketball game. Wallace hits both. The Georgetown lead is six. Tyler Crawford back in the game for the Hoyas. He has scored 11 points off the bench for Georgetown tonight. Interesting enough, too, John Thompson, the third, elects to put a little bit of full court pressure on. Not a lot, just takes some time off the clock. If he can get a deflection, it helps to take more time off. There's a deflection, there's a steal. That's all they're looking for. They were looking for the deflection first. At the same time, taking time off the clock. Now Rutgers just has to really extend Kenny and come out and, and go after things, but watch for backdoor cuts. Puck. Now pulls it back out. Shot clock, now a 10. Don't want to foul now if you've elected to take this much time off the clock. Three on the shot clock. 
Miles Green with a force. It's short. And a 35-second shot clock violation. But more importantly for Georgetown, it takes the game clock down to a minute 10. Well, that's the big number. Obviously, watch the clock. Webb's got to get this ball up the floor, down six. Look for the three. Webb's the screen. Here comes Shields across. Open for a second, but recovered well. Under one minute. Shields. Got a foul. Have to go one after the fouls minute. right now. You're down six. Ricky Shields now one of nine. Wow, well, just going to let him take the time off. Here comes the foul. Webb finally gets to him. Ray Reed played some keep away and then finally draws the foul number two on Marquise Webb. Ten seconds off the clock though down at the other end of the floor. Rutgers has no choice but to go into a fouling mode. Georgetown at the other side of the floor. All the strategy goes out the window if you make your free throws. Reed only 67% from the charity strike. Reed misses both, kept alive by Reed. Got to foul him again. It's Cook who is fouled by Doobie. Number two on Quincy Doobie. So Reed misses both free throws. Got the rebound is able to take seven more seconds off the clock. Ashante Cook will shoot two for the play. So Ashante Cook, the best free throw shooter on the Georgetown squad at 85%. Is now three of three today, has 19 points. Clock working against Rutgers at the end, but give Georgetown credit on the road. Hanging together pretty good. They have not really gotten rattled many sets down the stretch. Shields plays it in, 33 seconds left. It's a six point game, and Gary Waters Rutgers calls a third. uses a 30 second timeout. Well, the strategy right now, talk about the gap strategy defensively. Get yourselves ready to go for steals, and if you don't get it, go for a quick foul. We'll take a look at the game track with Georgetown with 31 rebounds. Rutgers only 21. Yep. Dante Cook now has 20 points with those two free throws. Ollie Bailey, 11 points, 5 rebounds. The high point man for Rutgers. Georgetown leading by six. Looking to raise their Big East record to seven and three. Gary Waters and Rutgers just one and seven in conference play. Their only win coming here over Providence. And they trail by six, 33 seconds as Bowman will inbound from underneath his own basket. You gotta go right away, foul. That's it. That's all you have to do. I mean, most people say go for the steal. People are arguing about the call right there, but they have to recognize you can't take the time and luxury to go for steals if, if you can't get to them. And I'll call on Wigan each team, Jim, with one timeout remaining in the possession arrow favors Georgetown. And why Georgetown can catch the ball like that, Kenny, and keep it like bear hug the basketball is because of that possession arrow. They know that. Ball comes in. I know I'm going to get fouled, but I'm going to hold on to the ball because I don't want to turn it over in the backcourt. Perfect from the line tonight. Now five of five. He is just two points shy of his career high of 23. Great all-around effort. Look at stance just a little bit to the left of center. It's effective. If it, if it works, Kenny, do not try to fix it. By the way, Cook with those two key three-pointers at the end of the first half. He had been 0 for 10 from three his last two games against Rutgers. Marquise Webb. Marquise Webb. Same strategy, just have to keep fouling. Cook looked to break through the press and was fouled by Doobie. It's his third. Rutgers on number five, Quincy Doobie, his third person. Well, next up for Rutgers, Seton Hall here on Tuesday. Jim, you will be on hand for that one. For the rematch, Seton Hall defeated Rutgers at the Meadowlands earlier this season while Georgetown will be in action next Saturday at home against West Virginia. A look at the Scarlet Knights upcoming schedule. Just have to find a way to get on track. Seton Hall coming back as you just touched on, but it, you know, it's 
the Big East. I mean, the conference, they punch one another all season long in conference play all around the United States in the NCAA. Great time of year. Webb from three, way off. Casado steps inside the line and hits. It's a five-point game, 8.8 .8 seconds remaining, and we should point out with that last free throw, Ashante Cook tied his career high of 23 points set earlier this season against Pittsburgh. And some people might be asking, well, you're down 8 point, it's 8.8 .8 seconds left in this game. Can you really make a run down five? You know what? You never know, and that's why Gary Waters called the timeout. He wants to make sure his team understands the situation. Until that clock disappears, you try to work it as best you possibly can. Georgetown, on the other hand, just really confidently saying, guys, this is the key. Let's just make sure we get good cuts on this inbounds pass and make sure you come and meet the basketball. Don't run away from the ball and give a Rutgers player an opportunity to slide in the middle of it. Georgetown with a victory with pull it to third place in conference play, trailing only Boston College and Syracuse. And for a team that was ranked 11th in the preseason coaches poll, that is quite a statement. Yeah, it sure is. What, four wins last year they had? Four wins in the conference, four yep. and 12, including one over Rutgers. Right. Boy, they've made some progress in a hurry. They lost their last nine games last season. Right. Finished with a record of 13 and 15. Came into this game 14 and 6. And I've been very impressed. This is my first look at Georgetown in person with the way John Thompson III has had this, the execution, the game plan, and his guys stuck right with it. What was that? Oh, he threw it off. Yeah, good move. He's trying to get the basketball back in off Wigan. It's actually a good play for young kids to recognize. And now Cook with the baseball pass ahead to Bowman. Bowman, pretty good catch over the shoulders there, huh, Mr. NFL? He will run out the clock. So the Georgetown Hoyas, the trail by eight in the first half. Same script as their first game against Rutgers. They trail by eight at halftime. They come back and win this one by the score of 61 to 56. Ashante Cook ties his career best with 23 points. And for John Thompson the third, his first win here at the Racket, three tries after two losses with Princeton. So Georgetown now. 15 and 6, 7 and 3 in conference play. Rutgers drops to 7 and 12, 1 and 8 in the Big East. For Jim Spinarco and our entire crew, Kenny Albert saying so long from the rack. This has been a presentation of ESPN Plus, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports television.